Uh, hi there. Uh, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, we last left off on a pivotal answer. Uh, Sasaki-san, could he have passed by uh, the location of the incident on his way home from your books? Uh, normally, in these instances, when they ask you, do you want to raise an objection, it's good for him to just say yeah and do it. And honestly, I feel like he could have gone the other way around, you know, realistically, so... Yeah, I'm gonna raise an objection, I'm gonna do it right now! Fucker. Sorry, there's no need, there's no need to be that aggressive. The assessment just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Hmm. Explain yourself, counsel! Um, yes, my lord. You, uh, you can see what I mean on this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings... Mr. Natsume could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. Yeah, exactly. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens! He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Though I will also say the fact that Suzuki san did say that he did see the lady getting stabbed, so... Not sure if that's the perfect uh, line of logic, but anyway. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... That route is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. Or that too, I guess. Ah! On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? Well, maybe he just wanted to do a bit of sightseeing. You know, take the scenic route. Maybe he get his blood pumping. You don't know. Well, um, erm... Um... The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. Again, you can't really prove that, though. Like, again, we don't know his motivations. Maybe he just wanted to get a bit of exercise in. Maybe he was counting his steps. Maybe he just wanted to see, take, you know, look around. Explore London a bit on his way home. We don't know. In other words, the accuser took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. But, but, but. Aha, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must have asked the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which, 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 which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Oh. Well, that's not very helpful. <sighs> uh, that's right. As I said, uh, the rope seems to spend his time outside, wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember which where he was or which route he took home. Damn it, Suzuki. Why couldn't you be more reliable? Come on, pal. I don't... I don't believe this! Well, f poopy. Sorry. I thank you, my learned friend, and suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you insightful jurors? But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... They all look kind of mad. Oh boy. 
Ah, I agree with Lord Van Zykes. Wholeheartedly, and in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does, does this mean... Yeah, we members of the jury are completely convinced now. Uh, very well. In that case, by here by call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty. 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 Oh, guilty. <laughs> also, wait, no, that's bad. Don't, don't do that. God damn it. Yeah, it would appear that Murray's leading is unanimous. Uh, to the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your grave resolve. You serve Queen and Country admirably. <laughs> Mr. Narahodo. Come on, pull yourself together, man. No. Not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the juror, jury. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. <clears throat> those are the eyes of Quarry not willing to get yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. The rights of the defense were written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Uh, yeah, fucking, d yeah. <laughs> Call it antiquated if you will, pal, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a submission examination if he so chooses. Yeah, bitch. Ah, very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? <clears throat> of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that nippity whippersnapper and his obvious refusal to throw in his alley. Uh, very well then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You would have to explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. You know, you can always you can probably try looking at the camera sometime, Bruce. Yeah, for pity's sake, that little Nipponese are they already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that the woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why, it could only have been the victim. So that would have got around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. Oh, so the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I got work to be doing. Hmm. Y your books? Yes. Mm, I shop that. But bourbon books? Ugh. No. Not worth a visit. Well, it's not much of a fucking reason to suspect someone. Hmm. With only minor, uh, with only minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty we are all too clear. When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the witnesses! You keep forgetting the people the witnesses! And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Uh, furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant didn't fled to see. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced that this announcement is guilt now. Ugh, why did he have to run away like that? And how are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? 
wasted our hodo. This is no time for grumbling. If we want to force a trial to continue, we better figure some shit out. Am I right, fellas? Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their mind. Well, four of them at least. <laughs> Exactly. We have no choice but to throw Fort forward. You have the floor, Council. Begin your summation examination. Uh, yes, my lord. Yeah, slap your fucking face. Do it, bitch. going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Rinosuke. You can do it. The defense is rebuttal. Anyway, now we get to, now we get to walk around. I'll see about that. Um, excuse me, but aren't you... Uh, uh, yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. <laughs> or the sight of it, anyway. If I remember correctly... You're a banker, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started fossing it around. Uh, Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry. I don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. Don't, yeah. Uh, ah, you had me and that young hat have pegged as criminals. I could have had you pegged for something worse. Oh, well, you know, wander under the bridge. Yeah, now there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around. And the police have been badgering me don't stop. If, uh, if I could turn back the clock. Yeah, well, anyway. I don't know about the hat, uh, but at least I'm in the clear now. <laughs> and free to make my own mind up about who's guilty and who isn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind, given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. Hopefully he's not rotting in prison. Uh, hmm. Ah, well, better press. <laughs> well, you're right, that at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat while walking ahead of him. Well, quite. That's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was a victim. And clearly that funny little Nepanese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. Oh, you got a problem with guys with some mustaches now? But let us not forget, madam, the defendant vehemently denies attacking the woman. Uh, why, of course he does. If he admits stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a little faced coward. Honestly. Claiming the weapon simply collapsed before his eyes. But if that's a lie as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have con concocted something more credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are, uh. 
foreign. Who's to say what goes through your funny little minds? Jeez, lady, you're kind of messed up. I can tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it, bitch. I do declare the man has already made the admission. The admission? He himself has stated there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could possibly have committed this awful crime. Ugh. If no one else had, could have done it, the accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Uh, your argument is compelling in, in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well, uh, for her. Let's see. Hold it! But you can't deny that there are other routes. Mr. Natsume could have, could have taken back from your books. Oh yes, like you do on the map, you mean? Uh, what was it? Uh, Calabash Road or something? Precisely. Uh, but it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fella actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at the moment, there's no proof that Josie did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Oh, we nights are dark and cold. So the way I see it, you want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yes. <sighs> Why is all this true, man? So really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. Ugh, I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my, wind on, my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the Calabash Roadway, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Hmm. A reason why Suzuki-san might have taken the long way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. Again, though, he did see the lady fall behind him. So clearly, he, he did, like, pass her pass, or at least, you know, go along the path of passing the, the victim. Whatever is the matter, young man? You're the wife of Mr. Garadev, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume his room. The master's... Oh, yeah. The master's wife? Uh, where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid. The maid, you understand? She's keeping up that charade. Ugh. This is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you've been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Which, again, seems like a conflict of interest. Uh, and should not be allowed. Uh, but I guess I, can, I guess I can't bring that up. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear. So I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Uh, I see. Anyway, uh, Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in a little over a week now. And in that time, surely he must have taken stock of his character. Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Oh my goodness me, yes. He's just sort. What? Spending all his time in that dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache. Damn, with all that mustache hate, what the fuck? The man never speaks, 
And don't be started on those shifty eyes. Oh, the neighbors are talking about him. I've heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb in there or something. Oh. Jeez. Oh, dear. Poor Mr. Natsume. How could people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm. Nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting this maid to speak. She's said enough damning things already. Yeah, that's for sure. I really don't care. Can we just wrap this up now? I got work to do it. Uh, let's see. A man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. And I don't clever get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too, you... And so is my family's. Ah. The likes of you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. And neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what he's doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog from dawn till dusk it is. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? Uh, that's right. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just round the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What? Another coincidence? I think not. Uh, that's right. Uh, Mia Shom Street it was. Uh, Mia Shom Street. On the map, Mr. Narahodo, there are only three named streets. Ah. Uh, jury, number f jury number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. Eh, what's the point in that? Can't we just get this business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. Mm. Yeah, fine, I'll do it then. Well, I would like it. Huh, that's interesting. But let me press this guy first. It's, 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 sorry. F fold it, you say? Uh, fold what? Um, no, no. What I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? Uh, I like the old books they have in there, yes. I enjoy beating them over a nice cup of old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. And at what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Uh, well, I was picking out books in there all afternoon. And it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. The same thing every day. Including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh, yes. No mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Oh, well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and, and, and donked my head. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Are you okay, dude? Knocked myself clean out, I did. Uh, I already thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road. At least it wasn't Allison Road. Uh, that's right. I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Door number six. I must insist. 
that you add that information to your formal statement, it may very well be extremely significant. Hmm? Sorry? Extremely sick? N no, no, I'm quite alright now. down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt. But I can't help but feel that some of their opinions are rather subjective. Uh, I agree. It's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. We must use that to our advantage, Mr. Narahodo, cunningly. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we know how this part goes. Yes, don't hold back. Pit them all against each other. And about, and about to the death. Hmm. Okay, I feel like what I want to do is... I want to pit this guy... Uh with this guy Objection. because if uh, he was digging up, the, digging up the street or whatever then that gives a perfectly good reason as to why or what um, Natsuki took the long way around yeah sorry uh, at all council explain yourself oh please please don't point it wasn't me I swear eh what I just want to get this done and dusted. Uh, well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir? Wait, what, what do you mean? Juror number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited his bookshop uh, to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Beersham Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant, the defendant's route home, could not have taken him along Beersham Street and down Briar Road. Oh, uh, yes, of course! Well, what do you think, sir? Uh, well, uh, yes, can't argue with that, really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman ha that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So, the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer, ray ba longer route back to his lodgings. Uh, yes, I suppose he must have. I, uh, I suppose I must be right, eh? Door number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, we see now that he had no choice. Yes? Oh, my lord, Mr. M my lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Uh, yes? Uh, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Uh, yes, I'd like to try this, see this trial continue, so we can get back to get to the bottom of what really happened. Yay! Okay, well, we got, well, okay, that's one, one guy down, at least. Uh, uh, what about you, what about you, sir? Eh? Who? Me? Yeah, well, alright then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in. That's what I say. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. That was wonderful. Eh, well, we managed to fit in a couple of minds, at least. It's strengthening our, it's strengthening our position somewhat. Oh, yes. And we'll prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really right or not. Now, uh, if only... 
phone did this identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting, Mr. Natsume. You might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. Van Zykes is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent, by whatever means we have at our disposal. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Council. On, on the submission examination, please. Yes, my lord. <clears throat> now, I'm pretty sure if he slipped over, he slipped over and knocked himself clean out. Well, let's see. Uh, if, if he, we, if we figure out that he would have had to have taken the other way around because of the, the roadwork being done, then this statement. Uh. He said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes. Well, you see, right? This fellow here, who fell over, uh, also is wearing green. I mean, he's not a woman, but, you know. Objection. Either way, it, uh, that seems like the obvious uh, thing to point out. Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the jeweler's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two? Juror number six? My! Whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable! It's not like I was loud or anything. <sighs> there is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of second-hand titles. He then returned home on foot. But, but, but the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are aware of all this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection. Can we really be sure of that, madam? My! Whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard your number six account of what ha happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets of the neighborhood. Oh my! <sighs> oh my goodness! You... you mean... Now th that's right! I'm referring, of course, to the hard of hearing juror number six. Are, are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat who the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was a jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Uh, yeah, that's true. Ah, well, look at that. Oh my goodness me. Mm -hmm. S sorry you need a pee. And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly the crime scene on Briar Road, where the woman was stabbed, was not on his way home. Oh, my! Well, hey, look at that. Uh, I, I wasn't thinking about that. Ah, you idiot old man! If you hadn't been so daft as to be rowing about in there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago! And uh, really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? Uh, what did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk these streets, huh? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? Okay, calm down. I've got to apply your makeup, I see. Oh, my lord, I hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... Uh, you'd like to change your leading, I presume? Oh, uh, I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I would too. 
What? Is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Well, no, I mean, no, I guess not. I mean, I'm not mad. I appreciate it, actually. Yeah, smack that fucking fire. Just fucking smack it. Yeah, that's how we do it. Well, <laughs> that's the basic examination that's concluded. But with a rather broad shift in opinion. The eyes, two. The nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Uh, which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Objection. Oh, you're objecting, are you? You gonna drink that fucking wine, are ya? What do you guys say to that? What do you got, what, what do you got pal? Oh. Okay, fine. Dude, dude, that glass is gonna fucking, like, cut through your glove, uh, at some point, and you're gonna be bleeding, and you're not gonna be a happy chap chappy, let me tell you. Could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hollow chalice a moment after raising an objection? Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Lord Dan Sykes? It seems I must retract my earlier remarks. Uh, what do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Didn't you say that about the last pair of, uh, last, uh, jurors from the last trial as well? I feel like you said something along those lines before. Ah, uh, yet we have just witnessed him befalling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed. Stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated, sir. Uh, that's, mm. That's, that's right. Took me the whole day, and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Ah, um, well, if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Uh, two yards is six feet. Oh, well, yeah, that too. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. I mean, have you seen, uh, that Natsume? Uh, he's not exactly a very vigorous man, I would suggest. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh? Eh? Me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, though. What? And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the sights of your works? Eh? I wouldn't dream of it. What a waste of time. Ah, uh, no coaches would have had a hope of passing anyway. And we just turn any gentlefolk gentle back when they come. Uh, kids just jump over and ride over us all the time. Ah, uh, the accuser is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Ah! Uh, is that true? Is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume walked down Briar Road. Ugh. Crushed. In a single sentence. And, old man. Uh, 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 cold man. You can talk. You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slipped and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, uh, I, uh, c can't say as I remember. You, you don't remember? How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man that the accused saw, but I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Ah, damn. Foiled again by the fucking van sites. Order? Order? Bro, Van Dykes, explain yourself. 
My lord. If you had such a printed argument up your sleeve, might well if you don't proffer it during the summation examination. Hmm. I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Ugh. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Oh, now you're taking off your coat. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over! What? What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. Uh, well, granted. Uh, wait, uh, wait for the witnesses. It's next witnesses? Mr. Narahodo, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Uh, yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. All right. No matter who Van Zyke brings to the stand as his witnesses, and no matter what they say, I believe in Soseki san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing to the very end. Until this battle is over. Yeah, that's that's the spirit. I would say. Oh, hi there. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Uh, let's see. A constable Broly Bates, sir. Huh? And to report on the street, sir. Huh? Oh. <laughs> and I'm Mrs. Bates. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. <laughs> um, what's the story here? <laughs> well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary only the other day! No, no, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems, uh, tired. Kind of a, sle kind of a sleepy boy, honestly. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Oh, really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Yeah, men bleed. Apart from days off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day, you know. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, survey the squeaks, check the meters are reading true, and are responsible for keeping the streets clean and lighting and extinguishing our street lights. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like policing duties at all. I would just be falling asleep on my feet. I'd have collapsed long ago. But it goes without saying that the policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. But the London Bobby is a man of honor. <sighs> and a man of slumber, it would seem. <laughs> on the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? Oh, then that's right, sir. Isn't it, Ronnie? Oh, okay. Uh, a constable Rolly Beat, sir. Uh, nothing to report on the street, sir. What a great witness he's going to be. Jeez, the, the, the jolly music keeps getting stopped and started. Uh, very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimony, Sir Crowd, please. You will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Uh, yes, sir. Bro, you can't just pass out every time you finish a sentence. What they saw. It was our wedding anniversary, and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. 
all of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor. Then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, and then went for help in a nearby police box. It was definitely that Japanese man in the dock. Uh, Rolly and I both saw him as clear as day. Well, uh, this is extremely compelling testimony, I must say. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look, it, it, it doesn't look good for us, at any rate. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positi to positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true, the alternative course of events that you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death knell, in fact. Because an alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate effect for chancing. And on your wedding anniversary, too. <laughs> oh, I know. But I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Gosh. The life of a London Bobby sounds very hard indeed. Indeed. However... This cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have the time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of the man fleeing the scene. They are testifying under oath that it was without doubt the, now the accused, Mr. Sosaki Sosaki Natsume. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, they're all reacting. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less. So you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Ugh. Except that the man's so tired, his wife has to do all the talking. Ah, enough preamble. Consult with the defense. Commence the cross-examination, please. Uh, y yes, my lord. Okay, well, I think we're going to have to save this uh, cross-examination uh, for the next episode. You know, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth, you know, might as well wrap things up while I still have the time. Uh, these two have very cute designs, I'll say. You got, they, they look very uh, kind of ragged, but also charming and in love, which is nice. Compared to what happened with, uh, compared to what's going on with uh, the Garadebs. Again, I still feel like having the the, the wife, who was also who was also the landlord mar married to the landlord, uh, on the jury for Natsume's trial, that seems like a bit of a conflict of interest. But you know, I already mentioned that before. Anyway, though, um, like I said, we'll 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 we'll, we'll start the formal cross examination uh, during the next episode. But oh, fuck! I didn't mean to do, to do that. That's my B. <sighs> but anyway, until then. <laughs>